like and subscribe right now, or else this will be in your bed tonight. r slash ask reddit by planet reddit. What's your worst I know this looks bad, but I can explain moment. I was really tall in junior high. One of my best friends at the time was pretty short, and we had a running joke where he would use a little kid voice whenever standing next to me, because I was so much taller. So one day we're playing tag around my church building, grew up in a conservative house, after most people had already left, and my buddy runs into the bathroom and locks himself in a stall, but I was taller than the wall of the stall. So I pressed up against it and looked down at him and said in my best creepy voice you can't hide from me. And he used his little kid voice to say oh no. Somebody please help. Of course. One of the old church ladies was standing in the doorway behind us. Watching the whole thing with horror. Turns out she was there to clean. And caught us at exactly the wrong time. Oh. Oh no. Oh yeah. Sister came home to her boyfriend and our brother laying his head in his lap. Her BF was holding his head in his lap and stroking his head and back. She was confused and as soon as she opened her mouth her BF turned around oh hey, be quiet. He just fell asleep. Apparently my brother got food poisoning and was throwing up constantly. Her BF showed up to return some things she left at his house. So being him, he helped our brother get some medicine from the store, change, and stroked his head on the couch till he fell asleep. It took a while since he was always getting up to throw up. We all laugh about it now. Edit. Okay. To clear up some confusion. Me and my sister are both 16. Her boyfriend is 17. And my brother is 19 going on 20 here soon. Also. My brother is shorter than her BF. Bro. 5 feet 9. SBF. 6 feet 1. This happened like 3 months ago. Edit 2. And my brother and SBF are both B. But SBF has only ever dated one guy years ago and my brother is like basically gay at this point lomfeo. And for all those asking, they consider each other brothers. Husband material right there. That's what I tell her lomfeo. I work at a school portrait company. I retouch thousands of images and sometimes I need to retouch inappropriate things. Well this high school girl was wearing a see through shirt and I had to retouch out her PPS. I was in the office by myself as a 20 something year old man when a girl walks in and sees me zoomed in on this high school girl's see through shirt. I can explain. I told her I'm not a creep. I'm just retouching her shirt so you can't see her PPS. It was very awkward but since she worked as a photographer she completely understood once I explained. I, I used to work in youth sports photography. This process is actually important. We had someone order a poster size image of their basketball player. But ah, uh, you could see the outline of his junk. We had to be sure to fix it because taking the calls of upset parents over these issues is just awkward. Yeah we missed one of a team group. Her shirt wasn't see through but her PPS were hard and poking through and we sent them out to everyone on the team. We got in trouble and the girl was very embarrassed. Definitely learned our lesson. This happened in high school. Shortly after I started dating my first boyfriend. At the time, I would often wear a camisole with a built-in bra layered under a v-neck tee. One day, I was wearing this outfit but wanted to go shopping after school for other shirts. So I brought a regular bra with me to try stuff on. After I got out of the store, I for some reason didn't want to put the bra in my bag so I put it in the armrest compartment between the front seats of my dad's car. And of course immediately forgot it was there. The next day, my parents were getting ready to go somewhere. They had left the house. But moments later my mom barged back in. Demanding to know why I was taking off my clothes in the car. I frantically tried to explain the clothes shopping story. But to this day I'm not sure she bought it. I thought for sure the turn was going to be your mom blaming your dad for having an affair. Same. Partially disappointed. I was volunteering at a pool for my instructor's certification. The girl I was with was really thirsty and asked if I would mind getting her a power raid from the vending machine since she couldn't leave her class. But she told me where her wallet was so I could get her change. Another staff member walked in while I was taking the money from her wallet. I was the most straight laced, nervous kid on earth. LOL. I explained. She either believed me or checked with the lifeguard later. But either way. The first girl got her power raid and the pool hired me later. So the second girl knows I'm not a thief. The girl I was with was really thirsty. Nice. 
and asked if I would mind getting her a power raid from the vending machine. Oh. I briefly wondered about that wording and decided I was being paranoid. Sorry, man. I've always hated the IH8YOU car use YOU raid RTNG my dark HTR thing that dads do. Why do they want to put unnecessary stress on someone when meeting them for the first time is probably already stressful enough. It's controlling and weird and makes the father seem like a huger. This is why I am quite alright with my father-in-law. When I first started dating the girl who would later become my wife, her dad was just so chill. He still is. Actually, he rarely seems to get stressed out about much of anything at all, except for the occasional bit of family drama. He's the sort of guy where if he's shouting, you know the situation has gone too far. My friend Anna was in her 20s but she looked really young, easily as though she could be a minor. She had too much to drink at the bar so I started carrying her home on my shoulders as she was having a really hard time walking. As we got to her house I went to let her down and she fell off and smacked her head on the fence. She was wearing a skirt and as she fell it went up to her waist. I'm trying to get her to come to so she can go in her house when an old lady walks out on her porch and starts screaming. What are you doing to that little girl? Where are her clothes? I try to calmly explain that this is her house and I'm just a friend trying to get her home but she just keeps shouting. Where are her clothes? What have you done to her? She won't come to and I realize just how bad the situation looks. So I tell the old lady we can call an ambulance. As I tell my friend we are about to call an ambulance. She immediately comes to and fixes her skirt and stands up. The old lady says, oh you were right. I guess she had clothes the whole time. Make your friend pay $3,000 for an ambulance ride so you don't look like a rapist. Nice. Make people have to pay $3,000 for an ambulance ride. Nice. America. Good, uck people like that. LOL I work in a nursing home and this kind of shit happens so often. Even with the ones who aren't confused. Some people just love to gripe. And arrest don't stop being arrest just BC they get old. Kudos to you for being patient for as long as you were. And she totally deserved the reaction. Hope your co-workers had your back at least. I was practicing anatomy for drawing a course. So, I had to look up naked models and stuff. No big deal. Just to get the human form down. Nothing too weird. I get done sketching for the day and went to bed. Over the weekend I was animating and my dad walked in my room to ask me something. Well, he goes what the hell? And picks up a drawing. I was like what? And he sees these drawings. I legit said the line wait. I can explain and he walked away laughing. While my husband was in nursing school, he lived at home with his parents. He had a similar experience while he was studying for anatomy. He had looked up something to do with the male genitalia, made his note, and continued on with his studying. While leaving the browser open to an anatomical D, his dad popped into the room to ask him something, looked at the screen. Mumbled oh, uh, okay and walked away while my husband yelled out I can explain. Both my husband and my mother-in-law are nurses and the topics they freely discuss are ones that, if overheard, would absolutely warrant a I can explain. I overheard a co-worker talking about killing all the children a few weeks ago. Perfectly reasonable phone call in IT. Just made me lol a bit. When my daughter was around 3 years old, she casually told my wife that daddy likes to come into my room naked and play with me. It took a minute to realize what she was talking about. A few weeks prior to that, she had woken up screaming. Bad dream. I'm guessing. I jump out of bed wearing nothing but boxer briefs to see what the problem was. To get her to stop crying. I tried to make her laugh. Luckily, my wife believed me. Of course Abby I trust you. Frantically call 911. The Hunt 2019 remake, starring Captain Awesome 06. I got super high and drunk one night with my best friend and his GF. They stayed at my house. My friend is a loud snorer so his GF ended up sleeping on my couch. My best friend in my guest room upstairs. At 4am I woke up still pretty drunk and high. For some reason I felt the need to check social media but couldn't find my phone. Drunk and Jaime decided to go downstairs to find my phone. Without realizing his GF was on the couch. I reached down by a pillow to check for my phone. 
She wakes up. And I'm left there having to explain at 4am why I'm grabbing her face. I don't think she believes my story to this day and I look like a rapist. My phone was in my pocket the whole time. Upside. It was her face that you grabbed. Thank god. Cause I'm pretty sure my friend and his gf would have murdered me. In the beginning months of a relationship, I was staying over at my girlfriend's apartment. We were in bed, and the only light in the room came from a bright lamp on the end table, on her side of the bed. Now, in addition to being a bit sensitive to bright light, I have a lazy eye that makes it hard to focus on things that are really close. Things like my girlfriend, at that particular moment. So naturally, I asked, could you turn off the light? You're really hard to look at. I don't know which of us had the bigger look of horror on our faces. Edit. My first silver. And I came so close to not posting. Thinking it wasn't quality enough a comment. Join our community discord. Link in description. In my freshman year of college, my roommate was a party animal. So I was used to having the room to myself. However, his Sundays were his get shit done days. And he was in and out of the room those days while he was getting his work done. While he was gone one Sunday, I clogged the toilet. Bad. Like. Satan himself stands in all of the Godzilla sized log in this toilet. Forget brown town. I was in brown country. And at the time, our plunger was a shitty little thing that didn't really work all that well. I've been plunging this toilet for about an hour. So I think it might actually work this time. And I try to flush it again. Mistake. The pipe in the toilet actually burst. Beginning to flood the bathroom with unsettlingly brown water. I was barefoot at the time. And in my haste to escape the torrent of horror. Slipped and bashed my head against the door. The doors at this college were terribly cheap. And made of essentially cardboard. So I punched a hole in the door with my face and break the lock. Thrusting the door wide open. My roommate walks in, arms full of papers, to see me holding my now bruised forehead, a massive uck of hole in the now broken door, and the bathroom flooded. First thing I said, I seem to be in a bit of a pickle here. Edit. Hey. My first reddit silver. Glad you can all laugh at my misfortune. So I was baiting a girl at this time. Let's call her Alexa. For about a year and shit was fun and cool but she had some serious trust issues. Anyways, one Sunday night we got home from spending the weekend at the beach and she goes home to see her family. I am playing video games and just relaxing at my place when an old gf of mine, let's call her Becky, calls me. Becky was a fun girl that I used to love very much but she had moved away for college. Anyways, Becky calls me up and says that she was back in town to meet her real father, something neither I nor she knew about until that moment, and said that the meet went terribly and has nowhere to stay and or go until her flight in the morning. Now, I didn't want things to get mixed up but I am also not a dude that lets someone they know out in the street for no damn reason. So I go pick her up, and ask what she wants to do. Becky just says she wants to stay in the car and chat while she calms down and well. After having such a shit situation that seems understandable. Backslash. During all of this I didn't really realize we were sitting in the parking lot of a convenience store literally next door to Alexa's place. So of course as fate would have it. She goes to buy some late night snack and sees me with an XGF late at night in my car. I eventually managed to calm her down and explain what was really happening but she had been cheated on before so she was having a super rough time with it. We stayed together for a while after that but I could tell that she never really seemed to trust me after that event and after some months later we just kinda fizzled. You did the right thing. But he should have spent the 5 minutes it would take to call up his gf beforehand and explain the situation. Communication saves relations. Ships. At my crush's house and she catches me washing my d. Never great. Hey. Kudos to you for washing your d. Many guys don't do this and got a stanky d when they have sex. It's never fun for the girl. Edit. Since this comment kinda blew up. If you like seals please check out the sub r slash seals doing things. It's not my sub but it's new and small. So if you have the time it would be greatly appreciated if you check it out. Oh. Years ago I was dating this girl. And I had just acquired a black powder gun. 
Now for those of you who don't know, one of the parts on many of the black powder guns is called a PP, and usually require a wrench to get off, mine didn't have this wrench so I punched in Ruger PP wrench into Google and went downstairs to grab a drink. When I come back into her room, she's looking at my laptop, wide eyed and nervously says um, I don't know if I would be into that, cue my reaction of what, no, wait it's a gun tool thing I swear, edit. I can English, I promise. Usually require a wrench to get off, you aren't making this better for yourself. I was out one night and forgot my keys, was trying to climb in an open downstairs window when a cop car pulled up outside, not a good look. Thankfully my housemate finally woke up and came down. We rented so would have been hard to prove as my had had a different address. Also a dog followed me home and they asked if it was my dog and it was cute so I said it was. Found the owner later in the week though. Good for him them. Bad for us. LOL to the dog part. Also glad he found his way home. Called my co-worker a slew. I was in second year university and lived in a house with 7 people. 4 guys 3 girls. And for some reason slew was a term of endearment in that house. We all called each other slew. Male or female. And it became just a part of our language. Someone walks in the door, yell out sup slew, and carry on with your day. At this time, I was working retail, and this one co-worker reminded me a lot of one of my roommates. She was super chill and funny and we got along really well. One day during lunch I'm sitting in the break room reading something on my phone. There's about 4-5 or five other people in there, and she walks into the room. I notice her and without even looking up from my phone goes up slow. Immediately the entire room goes silent and as I can see all my other co-workers preparing to tear me a new a for calling her that. Understandably, from their perspective I have to frantically try to explain why I just insulted her for no apparent reason. Thankfully once I explained everyone understood and thought it was funny, but I thought I was going to get fired for a few seconds there. I was in the middle of fapping one day, pants around the ankles in the computer chair, lube next to the keyboard. Three different O tabs open. Then I got a phone call that a friend of a friend had died tragically. And could I make up a pamphlet for her for the funeral? The family will pay me $100. So I'm thinking. Great. A chance to make some cash. I immediately switch to Photoshop and get to work. With the pic of the deceased and a big. Flow original. In loving memory. I got so involved in the work. I forgot I was still bare ass naked in the chair. So my roommate walks in and sees me looking at that in loving memory. Pamphlet. Pants around the ankles. Loop next to me. Um. Best friend giving me a massage on her bed. We're both lesbians. Our wives were out at the pub. And came back to me moaning and my friend straddling me. Massaging oil into my back and shoulders. Luckily we're all very good mates. And didn't really need to explain what was going on. But it could have been an entirely different situation had either one of them had any doubts. Edit. For those wondering. Yes we're British. No we honestly have no feelings for each other across the couples. Sounds like you casually swing lol. In elementary school a new girl moved to town and she was an instant hit with the rest of the girls on our block. Seemed everyone wanted to be friends with her and hang out at her house. I was more of a hang with guys type of tomboy but I was friends with a couple of the girls and they were friends now with the new girl and they all invited me over to play at her house. I wasn't told it was her birthday party, so I was the only one who didn't come dressed for a party and I didn't bring a gift, so that was kind of awkward. And then when they started playing games I wasn't really into them. But I was friends with the neighbor boy and he was playing over in the sandbox so I went to play with him instead. The new girl apparently had a crush on him and didn't like me playing with him which brought attention to us over by the sandbox. So her mother came over to ask me to come back and play with the other girls. I declined. And went back to digging in the sand. Boy asks me to bring more sand from a different spot and I started shoveling it into the bucket. And he insists it will be quicker if I just dog pedal the sand over to him. Okay, so I crouch over to start digging tossing sand, ask him if he's ready, and out of the way and get the okay, so I start paddling sand in between my legs in his direction, he still managed to get hit in the face with the sand, 
He starts crying and the mother comes back over, grabs me out of the sand and starts yelling at me for throwing sand at his face on purpose. And how she know WSI did because she seen me throw it and could sense my intentions by the look on my face etc etc. Causing a huge scene in front of half the people in the neighborhood. I tried to explain that I didn't do it on purpose. But she cut me off demanding I apologize and leave at once. I could hear her telling her daughter and friends as I was leaving I wasn't welcome over or to play with her daughter anymore. Murdered my childhood social life. Ro, what a thunder aunt. Several years ago, I was working at a place that was a decent hours drive away from my house. That daily trip probably could have been made in 15 minutes, but there were several sections of highway where traffic slowed to a crawl, and since I didn't have anything else to do, I'd occasionally fight off my morning grogginess with the aid of an energy drink and a donut. During one particularly memorable commute, although I didn't realize that it would be at the time, I had a chocolate eclair with me. It was of the cheap, custard filled variety that you can get at any convenience store, meaning that the aforementioned filling wasn't as evenly dispersed as it might have been. This state of affairs became unpleasantly evident to me after I squeezed the pastry in the wrong way, the result of having needed to suddenly slam on my brakes, and an enormous dollop of yellowish sludge fell onto my lap. I should mention at this point that I was wearing black slacks. Needless to say, I wasn't at all pleased by the prospect of showing up to my office with a suspicious stain on my crotch. Quickly scraping the custard away worked well enough, but there was still some residue left over. So I tipped a bit of my energy drink onto the spot, then started scrubbing at it with my thumbnail. Unfortunately, I hadn't thought to bring any napkins along with me. I kept glancing up to see if the traffic ahead of me had started moving. But I was mostly focused on trying to remove any traces of the mark from my pants. Which is why it took me so long to notice the car full of teenage girls that was directly to my left. Looking back, well... There are probably 4 young women out there in the world who think they watched a man getting very angry at his n. Too long didn't read. Trying to clean a suspicious stain made me look like I was about to cause another one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.